I'm gonna go solo. Let me just remove this. Uh, yeah, confirm that it's solo. The hats, the high hats are completely solo. And we also got a really healthy amount of reverb being sent into the into the mix. Okay, girls and boys. So let's get remove this. And I'm gonna mess around with the pre-delay. So please, please, please pay close attention to how fast uh, the reverb sound is gonna come back to us. Okay, right now it's basically immediately. But as, as soon as I start to move this thing around, you will see that the reverb is going to come uh, later and later and later. So here we go. And you might be thinking right now, it starts to sound like a delay. And yes, it did. And the reason is quite interesting, I suppose, because uh, technically speaking, a reverb unit is actually a super, super, super fast delay unit. That's the reason why, and, and also repeating the, the, the repetitions that are part of the delay uh, sound are so, so close together that it gives the impression that you are actually uh, making the reverb sound, okay? So, and actually, as, as a fun fact, once again, uh, when, when developers are working or, or developing a uh, reverb uh, plugin they actually uh, start developing a, a delay isn't that awesome well i find it interesting because it's quite cool it's quite cool so why would you use this we scientifically speaking uh, and this might be wrong but this is something that i uh, that's coming back to from it's coming from my uh, uh, training years if you set a pre-delay somewhere around 30 milliseconds 30 milliseconds is somewhere in between what we associate to natural sounding reverb. Okay, girls and boys, we're giving uh, the we're actually uh, giving the impression that the, the the room is actually real. Okay, that the, the room that we are creating by applying reverb is actually real. So I'm gonna set it like that and let's see how it sounds like now. And actually, it does sound a little bit more real. So right now, I feel like we got a, a, a good effect. And I'm going to back it off. I'm going to bring back the rest of the mix. And I'm going to go a little bit uh, softer with the amount of reverb. So I'm going to go... Uh, right now, we're dry. I'm, I'm going to start I'm gonna start to add up the sound of the reverb to the rest of the mix little by little. Here we go. Nice. Now I'm going to do the same with the snare. I'm going to send it straight to the same reverb. Here it is. Perfect. And we're going to do the same pre-fader. Re, pre and I'm going to start to send some of the information. Good. Now it's time to add some uh, punch or an, an attack to the sound of my snare. And how to do it? It's by applying distortion. So, which distortion should I use, girls and boys? That's actually an interesting question because I don't know. I don't know how do I feel like. Hmm, I already showed you Devil Luck, but I can always show you. Hmm, let's give it a try to this guy. Nice. This is a really vintage looking uh, plugin because it's actually based on a really vintage uh, uh, unit. It's a compressor and it might be quite interesting. So here we go. I like it, I like it, because what we're doing with this setting, we are uh, actually compressing the attack a tiny bit and extending the tail of our uh, snare. 
but actually I feel like I, I should go a little bit nuts a little bit more a little bit more compressed so mm, should I yes I'm gonna push more of the energy into the compressor Nice, now it's tight and punching. Let's bring back the rest of the mix. Nice. Now I want to start to change the sound of my uh, my snare because what I did with the compressor was uh, laying a proper foundation for our sound design. So here we go, Gerson boys. It's time to add flair. Now I really want to use uh, distortion, so I think that I'm gonna go straight to hmm, which one would be cool? Radiator. Because this guy is not only a, 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 a distortion generator, but it's also a beautifully sounding EQ. But it's super simple, girls and boys. Bass, treble, that's it. Simple as that. And the good part is that it actually comes with an output <laughs> now, so we can control the amount of uh, uh, signal going out of this. So here we go. You know what, girls and boys? I like what it's doing to the sound of my uh, to the sound of my snare or clap, but um, I think that I'm gonna put it first because I want I, it's starting to change my dynamics, and that's not something that I like. Perfect, Gerson boys. I like it. Now I want to add distortion. This is the, mo the important moment, Gerson boys. So from there, I want to use some... Which one would be good? Uh, I want to use something that you have never seen before, Gerson boys. Uh, we're going to use character. This is crazy cool, Gerson boys, because this is based on a really amazing piece of outboard gear. And it's just a really amazing, amazing sounding, amazing sounding distortion unit. So here we go, Gerson boys. We're gonna have the amount of drive or the amount of distortion being added, a filter, and a, a gain knob, which is gonna allow us to compensate the amount of uh, output as we should. So here we go, Gerson boys. Great, I like it. Now I li I would like to add um, reverb, but this time around I want to add a really crazy, big and and long uh, sounding reverb. So the way to go is going to be doing this. I'm going to try. I'm going to create a new bus, and this is going to be a plate reverb, as the name might have it make you think. 
So here we go. I'm gonna make sure that it's a it's a, a, a stereo output because I want to make it feel like gigantic. So then we're gonna add a reverb uh, unit. So where is the reverb? Here, perfect. And we're gonna use a really cool yeah this guy. This is a really cool sounding reverb unit, and actually it's quite cool. You will see. It's super simple. We can add more distortion because that's the main reason why I decided to add this. 